Greetings, comrades. My name is Demarora, and welcome back to From the Depths. Now, I have some news to share. I will not be continuing the CVF-1 Pact, as I have had a little change of heart on my building designs. Now, I will actually be moving all of my old builds away from the campaign, so you will not see any of them. What you will see is what I will show you here today. Now this is just a standard resource base. No defenses on it, just does its job, does what it needs to do, that's all it does. It has an extremely efficient oil refinery. It does take a while, but it's beyond efficient. Tons of resource storage, not the most, but I'll make resource barges just to carry all of it in the campaign. Small engine, does its job. And, well, four gatherers and four oil drills. This is meant for unlimited zones, just because these will drain limited zones way too fast. So, I'll have a much, much smaller base for those. Now, this base is a regular staging area, no defenses again, and it's got a regular spawner, but that's that. So there is what our starting point will be. Now we also have a Type 1 Petrobo. Petrobo? Oh my god, yep. I've got your language skills. So this has a 25mm dual mount, AA gun on the back, and a 57mm autocannon on the front. Now what makes this little patrol boat special is its reactive shielding. Right now they're not up because there aren't any enemies, but that's not the point. Reactive shielding is where the shields look transparent until something hits them. This, I mean, for some players, if I were to use this against players, this would confuse them into thinking this is unshielded, and thus really weak. It's not a very weak little ship. It cruises at about 20 meters a second, which is very fast for a little propeller-driven ship. It doesn't do the most damage, but it wasn't designed to, so it fits its job perfectly. It also only costs about 17.5k metal. Now for a starter ship, that's pretty dang decent. This is a starter ship that will last a fair amount of time. Of course it can't handle godly designs and such, but it was never meant to. So we're just gonna zip around here and get back into position. So this is our little you know, starter ship. We'll have a couple of those to begin our campaigns. So we're going to destroy all. And let's load up the next. Now the next is the Kamikaze Mark 1. This isn't fully my design, but I have tweaked a fair amount of it. So away it goes. When there are no enemies nearby, it will use minimum power just enough to stay in the air. But when an enemy gets by, such as a vicious marauder, it goes fully insane, flying squirrel mode, and then when you think you've seen it all, it impacts and does an insane amount of damage. So let's actually get our camera over here, whoop. It tears holes in everything. It's technically not a projectile, so shields can't stop it. It's insanely hard to hit unless something is flying at this level, because then it has a straight shot. But I plan to use these in swarms with kamikaze carriers. Like that. Ripped almost all the deck off. Now those are our kamikazes. About 4k metal each. They do way more damage than they should. But here's our next aircraft. This is the F2C Spear. Now, I'm not great with designing fighters, so this is a composite propulsion. It uses 
two heat infrared. I should just say infrared. Infrared, three meter long missiles. Not the best, but they do fragmentation damage with a very small cone. So, they do their damage. They aren't the best, but I'm keeping them for now as a as just a little placeholder, I guess, until I make better designs. Also in our lineup, we have the B-1A Stratonimbus. This is my first bomber. The A is armed with 24 mines. Now these mines make regular mines look pathetic. They have the standard magnet on them, of course, but they have two low angle frag warheads and a regulator. So these things will sit in the water for about four minutes before they self-detonate. Unlike regular mines, which would detonate in just one minute. So this can carpet a whole area in very deadly mines. And the little F2C. I see that you're annoying the Marauder. Now the B1A isn't my best. It's not my worst. But I'm fairly proud of it. It looks... Just doing a jig there. It looks sort of like a real bomber. Here it goes. Making the attack run. I'll just spawn this in while we wait. This is the B1B. I will cover it in a second. Of course, it's visually similar. It's a little bit slower than the B1A. Oh, hi. But you will see why. So B1A is coming in for an attack run. It's very accurate with dropping these. Usually drops them within a very... Oh jeez. Don't hit the F2C, please. Very close range to the target. Just enough to keep it within, well, magnet range. Of course the Marauder is going to want to run away, but these will stay in the water for a very long time. Now before I... Let's forget me. about it, let's hop on the Stratonimbus. The B-1B. Now this uses the B-1A airframe, but adds in, oh, where is it, 2,000 millimeter high explosive cram cannon bomb shoot thing. <laughs> it's a nuclear bomb, basically. This does an insane amount of damage if it hits. And on a Marauder, it really should. So, here it comes. Preparing to fire. Drop the bomb, please. Or not. Do whatever. I'm not your boss. Wait, yes I am. Okay, whatever. We'll get it when it comes back around. So here we see the accuracy of the B1A. This is my strategic bomber. And it's meant to stay in the sky for as long as possible. It's really better on a centralized resource, but on localized it still does its job. Whoa! Okay, that was the F2C. There are the mines, they're nasty. I'm waiting for the B1B to come around again, because it's the true master of the show right now. Looks like it's repaired most of the kamikaze damage. And the F2C is coming around. I do believe I have cameras on those, so they can't be thrown off. Which one's the B1B? <laughs> okay. Here we are, back on the B1B. This attack run looks much better. It's not deviating. Let's see. Drop the bomb, please. Unless you don't feel like doing what I want you to. Okay. So just to get it to focus on the one we want, we're going to scrap Lift the me. other two so they don't interfere. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I know. They're gone now. So it should head after... Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. So I just want it to head after the B-1B. It's taking a fair bit of damage from the other aircraft. I guess I could spawn in a... Uh, PT Type 1, or PB Type 1. I'll show you all what that little guy does. But let's get a nuke to hit. Come on, I believe in you, Stratonimbus. Unless you do that, then I don't. 
Boom. Oh, okay, there it goes. Bombs away. And we have impact. Yes. It ripped right through the thing. That is... Yep, it completely destroyed the AI. And there we have it. It is dead. And I hear a vacuum going on in the background. I hope you guys can't. Let's just spawn in the PT type one. Just, just as a little test. So here it is. We're gonna spawn in something it would face. Let's do a Drake light. There it goes. Firing away happily and shooting itself. It's a very accurate little thing. see the transparent shields. Hopefully we'll get shot with something. Oh, well, a missile isn't exactly something to show. Come on, shoot your little cannon. I know you have it. Yeah, there they go. Finally, those mines laid forever ago are detonating. So it does its job against wooden vehicles and such. It's definitely not... Oh, ouch. What was that? Did you just run over a mine? I think you did. Yeah, it ran right into a minefield. <laughs> and there it goes. Dead. So that is the Black Royale fleet right now. You're turning into a submarine. Congratulations. But I am all out of time for this episode, and I have showed you all that I would like to show. So, as always, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that helps you know that you'd like to see more of my content in the future. As for now, Demerora signing off.